The breaking news that unfolded last week right here <laughs> right. at 10. It was the only thing we were all talking about except the eclipse. Yep. Uh, nearly a week ago, an earthquake shook New York City streets. Mornings at 10 o'clock. You at home, you probably felt it. We just experienced an earthquake. I, I just, the lights sh shook a little bit. Notice. An earthquake of this magnitude is not uncommon, but mm -hmm. for this area, mm -hmm. it still is a little unsettling. And all of a sudden, we felt the jolt. And I heard this rumbling, so I looked outside. That was one of the most terrifying things I've ever experienced. I want to show you all what's happening right now in the Situation Room. Definitely, we felt those shakes here. Now, they do. Well, days after that 4.8 magnitude earthquake rattled this area, a 2.6 magnitude aftershock was reported by the U.S. Geological Service uh, yesterday morning, about three miles southwest of Gladstone in Somerset County. The USGS reports there have been nearly 50 aftershocks since the big one on Friday, and the one in Gladstone was the second strongest of them all. Even though no major damage reported, there was a school that had to be closed in Brooklyn. The city receiving like 150 reports of damages, none significant. Maybe Nina Pineda's potted plant out there that she <laughs> showed that toppled over. But certainly it makes people feel uneasy, no doubt about that. It got our attention and also we're raising a lot of questions about earthquakes. Yeah. Well, having a 4.8 in our area is highly unusual. Mm -hmm. We are normally, if we have these small quakes, they're much lower standard yeah. set than that. So it raises a whole new level of conversation and even concern, really. So joining us now is Dr. Samantha Tramontano, um, a geologist and postdoctoral fellow at the American Museum of Natural History. Doctor, I'm so glad you're here because, look, you know, for years we talk about the Ramapo Fault. It's a big fault. Mm -hmm. We talk about the other small Small faults that are in our area. We have some running up the west side, up Central Park as well. So, but we talk about these being almost dead faults. So, is this like a new awakening of these zones? What, what do we know about this right now? So, we know that there are very low level active faults surrounding the New York City metropolitan area in New Jersey, north of the city, and south of the city as well. Uh, while this earthquake was surprising, it wasn't unexpected because we have such a low level of activity. Um, we aren't entering a new phase necessarily. Earthquakes can reactivate. These are fault lines that were generated hundreds of millions of years ago during early mountain building events. And when the earth moves, things shift and accommodate for that. And that's what the aftershocks are as well. They're accommodating for the motion that was initially released by the main shock. So, so in a way, I'm hearing you say we don't necessarily need to be worried about this now. We're not going to suddenly turn into California. But is there any way, and I wonder why it is difficult to figure out when there's enough stress that the earth is likely going to do some question. shifting. I know that, you know, science has improved, but I think earthquakes, it's still difficult to predict them, right? Yeah, they are statistically random events. Uh, at least main, sh main large shocks are. Uh, the USGS does a great job at forecasting the probability of small aftershocks. And we can talk about that in a moment. But for these main shocks, uh, there's often very little bending before a break that happens mm -hmm. in a fraction of a second, right? So these are events that often don't see a uh, lead up and make it very challenging for scientists to predict. But the aftershocks, right, are a common feature as the brittle rock around this main fault break uh, accommodates for this changing shape of the Earth's crust. Uh, and so the USGS updates their forecasts in the same way that the Weather Channel and weather forecasting does and works. And uh, they just updated theirs last night to be precise. Yeah. So I can update you on that. Yeah, please do. Uh, it's a little different from a weather forecast in the fact that we can follow weather around the planet and we can't follow quakes. So it's a little different in that, but at least we have a forecast and let's talk about what it means for people in our area. We may have a special report, doctor, if we have to cut you off, but I'd love to hear your answer. Yeah, the, they are inherently different. We cannot observe the interior of our planet in the same way we can observe our atmosphere. Um, but we can assign a probability to an event happening. And the chance that an event that is larger than what we experienced on Friday is happening in the next week is 1% or lower. Uh, the fact that we might see a, a magnitude of three or greater uh, the probability assigned to that is 12%. Wow. Uh, what we experienced yesterday was a 2.7. 
the USGS doesn't tend to even forecast earthquakes Those, of that yeah. small magnitude. Yeah. So these these are small events that are, are generally in the background. And just for peace of people's peace of mind, what we've known before this is likely the way we're going to find ourselves after this. Is that what you're saying? That we will will be back to smaller quakes in that two level, and we we shouldn't ramp up any concern. No, I don't think there's any reason for concern. Uh, this is just a reminder that we're on an active planet, uh, which you know has its beauty in that. But we aren't expecting any any significant larger earthquakes to occur. Dr. Tramontano, it is always a pleasure to talk to you. You're so knowledgeable, and I got to believe it is. If as a geologist, this is like a gold mine. <laughs> you actually get to feel it and practice it and take a look at it and share that knowledge with us. Yes, with you, with my students, with my family and <laughs> yeah. friends in New York. So thank you for having me again. Good to thank see you, Sandra. You. All right, thank, thank you. you. Definitely. Since